Juliana Sproles checking in on Sunday, the 31st of March, 2020, during our little retreat from the world. You know what I'm talking about. The virus that shall not be named in this video is what we're retreating from for a short, brief respite. So I'm using my time to make candles and um, I'm introducing you to beeswax candles and some of the supplies that you'll need, um, whether you are making a container candle or a pillar candle. All right, so let's do um, a quick tour of the table and um, we'll talk about wick last. I wanna start with um, containers versus pillars, right? So, Here's some examples of a container candle would be just simply adhering a wick to the bottom of a glass or other container and making a container candle. Form candles usually are poured in silicone or other, um, silicone works very well because it doesn't stick. This happens to be a Pettifor pan that I've done videos on tea light refill candles. Um, and then this would be a really cute pillar candle that has some bees and swirls so it'll have a little decoration on the on the pillar candle separate video for pillar candle making all right so you need something to put your beeswax in something to adhere the wicks to you'll need the wicks which we'll talk about in a moment um, it will be good to have a pair of needle nose pliers um, I sent my good ones away and so this is the one I have left, but it works. So we want to be able to crimp our wick sustainer tabs onto the wick with the needle nose pliers. We need to be able to really crimp that tightly on there. We'll show that in a moment. So a pair of very sharp floral shears for cutting wick, especially primed wick that has wax on it. So these I get from Ace Hardware for $11.49 or something like that. Something to tamp down the wick in the bottom of your silicone vessel or your candle container. So this is a awl or a bamboo skewer to make sure you are tamping down your wick tab and sustainer um, on the bottom of your vessel. All right, different wick tabs. So this is a sustainer. Um, let's see here. We have these little thread. Um, we would thread the wick through this little piece of aluminum tin. Yes, it is. We have different sizes, as you can see. Small, medium, or large. You can thread your wick through and basically crimp the wick, crimp the the sustainer tab onto the wick so it'll hold it so it will hold it up and keep it in place all right how do we get the wick to stay on the bottom of our vessel or container we would use a high uh, heat resistant glue dot this is a double-sided glue dot that comes from either Cozyors or another company online Amazon easy to find these in different sizes here's the size, the small size that matches these small sustainer. So basically we would take the, um, well, we'll show you. We'll show you. Basically we glue that to the bottom of the glass, right? Or if you didn't have this handy dandy double-sided glue dot, you would use a high temperature glue gun. A little dot of glue adheres it nicely to the bottom of your glass or vessel and helps keep it in place. There are ways to make candles without doing any of this process. 
you could thread your cotton wick through and just leave it. without a tab. But we'll talk about that, as I said, in another video. Okay, now let's move to the other side of the table. And we'll talk about how do I know that I have the right wick for my project. The easy answer is by trial and error. Um, that's the simple answer. Okay, so I'm going to give you a tour of wick sizes. I originally started this process and I purchased some little sample packs from Beehive Alchemy and they are very nifty. You'll see wicks come in the smallest size, a 6 slash 0 going up to 1 slash 0 and then the larger wicks, square braid wick sample sets for larger candles would be, for instance, they would come, um, this one also came from Beehive Alchemy, five yards each of the number one, two, three, four, five, and then uh, we had three yards of the six, eight, and ten. So you can see for beeswax, square braid cotton wick, here's another um, type you can get from Premium Craft. Here I like, made in the USA is nice for us. Okay, so the square braid cotton wick does really well for feeding the, the very durable, very hard, long lasting pure beeswax, feeding it up through the wick to the heat source and uh, mixing with the air. So you have the symbiotic relationship of air, wax, and wick. All right, so this is hard to tell but it's very small um, and thin. Let's see if I have something. Okay, here's the bamboo skewer for, um, you can see, you can compare the size of the bamboo skewer to the six. This would be for like birthday candles or something very small, right? So then we go to five, gets a little bit thicker. And then we have a four and a three. And this says it's a two, but I'm not certain because it looks awfully fat to me. Of course, I've primed this wick with beeswax already to make it stiffer. Um, but I think this could actually be a two instead of two slash zero. Because remember, we're going six slash zero, five slash slash zero, four slash zero, three slash zero, two would be a popular size. And then we come to um, this, originally was 500 feet of wick on this roll, 500 feet. And that came from uh, totally handmade, one, slash zero square braid cotton wick. And I use this, I've used this for most of my small candles. Um, it's nice and stiff on its own, but then when I prime it with beeswax, it works very well for my small, uh, always with you travel candle. And some of my other candles like the swirl, swirl party candle or the classic dinner candle. That's what I've been using. Now, I know that the um, number one and number two are probably the most popular sizes. So we can put one or two or three wicks in a candle and do very well and make almost anything with this number one. So if you had to choose a wick to get to start a project, I would just try this and then go from there. We'll do another video on looking at your wick flame and seeing if your candle is over wicked or under wicked. Okay, so anyway, now we're going up from here. We were, we had the one, 
slash zero, right? Then we go to a one, very popular, a little bit thicker. And then number two, a little fatter, three, four, five, and six. Can't wait till I make something with this. Then we go to number eight. And look at this guy. Number 10, very, very fat. So as we go along with this, I'm still in intro to can introduction to beeswax candle making, um, but we'll get sophisticated as we go and see if we can do a number 10 wick. Won't that be fun? All right, so we have glue dots, wick, sus wick sustainer tabs, glue gun, floral shears, needle nose pliers, uh, bamboo skewers for holding the wicks in place. It's very important to keep our wicks centered. And um, then the beeswax. All right, so let's see if we can show you what it looks like. Oh yes, and parchment paper. This is wax paper, but parchment paper, um, so that you don't, so you can protect your surfaces. And this is the beautiful, golden, melted, 100% pure, naturally sweet smelling, subtle sweet honey aroma of the beeswax. Um, I don't have anything prepared to pour yet, so. Oh, I wish you could smell it. It's just very, very pleasant and soothing. Okay, let's see. There's some light here. How do we do this? Hmm. Yeah. Well, you get the idea. Ta-da! All right. I... Uh, We'll replace this and I will remind you that beeswax helps clean the air by emitting negative ions into the air. Those negative ions combine or attach with the positive ions of allergens or other foreign um, poly, uh, poly, uh, pollution in the air and helps us clean the air. Also negative ions help us um, feel good like when you're at a waterfall, you would um, experience a high content or quantity of negative ions around waterfalls or moss, beeswax, and other, other natural elements. So I think I'm going to leave it there for now. Um, thank you for bearing with me on the introduction to wicks and materials supplies needed. We'll go into pouring a few short candles tonight and call it a night. Juliana Sproles, signing out. Be well.